Hi everyone, welcome to Beyond Space, even at the Tundra. In today's episode, we'll talk about um, uh, the super flares from uh, pre-main sequence stars. Um, that's why our next guest is uh, Konstantin Gertman of the Pennsylvania State University, who recently led our research um, um, describing the super flares, and um, uh, we'll find out what they can tell us about uh, uh, star formation and uh, even how they affect uh, planet formation in um, uh, planetary systems. Uh, so without any further ado, please welcome Konstantin Getman. Hi, Konstantin. Thank you. Hi, Thomas. Great, great to have you on our show. Okay, so if, if we, we can start with this. Um, what are these super flares, uh, X-ray super flares uh, for, from the stars? Uh, are they really, uh, why are they so super? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's all in comparison, Thomas, in comparison to solar flares. Uh, I don't know if you know powerful that uh, yeah, yeah. The, the most powerful solar flare is called Carrington event. Uh, it took place in 1859. Uh, British astronomers detected it and uh, it uh, was associated with very powerful uh, geomagnetic storm that knocked out telegraph system uh, across North uh, America and Europe. Uh, and so the X-ray energy of that flare was about 10 to the 31 arc, okay? So what we're dealing here uh, with regards to young stars are uh, X-ray energies in order of 10 to the 34 to 10 to the 38 arc. It's by factors of 1,000, 10 million higher than the energy of Carrington event. Wow, that's, well, that's a real powerful, yeah. <laughs> Powerful well, that black. Reason, yeah. Very powerful. Okay. So, um, yeah. There are also flares were observed from main sequence stars, mainly with NASA Kepler mission, for instance, or TESS mission in optical bands. And main sequence stars like our sun, the the old stars, but sometimes they show flares more powerful than the uh, flares from our sun. But they still, you know, they reaching energies 10 to the 30 five fish in x-ray band but never 10 to the 36 ish and 10 to the 38 like what young stars do okay so uh, what exactly did you find in your la uh, latest research regarding those uh, super x-ray super flares well yeah f first of all we've accumulated huge uh, statistical sample of those flares that's first advantage of our recent published two papers is that we've just accumulated. We looked across 40 star forming regions, nearby star forming regions in our galaxy uh, with Chandra and with other telescopes. But specifically for this purpose with Chandra, because of the huge number of accumulated star forming regions, we were able to accumulate large sample of flares uh, that have never been uh, comprised before. Uh, I mean, we've, uh, in our sample we have about 500 mega flares. Previously published uh, uh, papers in the literature on, on flares from premium sequence stars have samples of mega flares of at the at, 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 uh, order of 50, 60 ish. We, we have 500 mega flares. So, uh, important is that we have a large. Uh, yeah, an impressive flare. sample. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that allowed us to go to details with regards to many interesting scientific aspects of uh, uh, flare physics. For instance, uh, one thing we, we were able to um, accurately determine the frequency occurrence rate of those flares from young stars. And uh, those occurrence rates, when you compare them, occurrence rates of mega flares, and we also could extrapolate towards super flares. And with, so for some comparison, relative comparison to uh, flare rates, occurrence rates for solar flares, if we extrapolate to super flares, we find, for instance, one of the examples is that uh, we know from NASA Kepler optical studies uh, of main sequence stars like the sun, that occurrence rate on the sun of a flare with energies 100 times more than Carrington event is about one flare per 6,000 years. Uh, we estimate for young stars, our current rate of such super flares is 
uh, one flap a day. So it's oh. one <laughs> actually <laughs> every day <laughs> another power oh. for, for the flare. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That, 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 one flare every day. Yeah. That, that's uh, very often. Uh, <laughs> We, so, we don't we didn't see them every uh, every day uh, here right and no, on no, our no. sun yeah uh, that kind of powerful and that often <laughs> so it's really uh, yeah uh, really interesting to so we have a huge sample and uh, uh, please tell me more what what did you find regarding uh, if you uh, uh, observed uh, in the young stars about the the process of star formation star evolution in this uh, early stage how they affect uh, this uh, this this process uh, this flares uh, what can what can you tell us about about this yeah so uh, it's not since uh, with regards to star formation uh you have to know that young stars are forming large families we call them stellar clusters it's typically one cluster can contain hundreds or thousands of uh, young stars like very rich families uh and and then they're very young we we just uh discussed we found that occurrence rate of super flares are very large and ma many of those young stars are still surrounded by circumstellar disks it's it's sort of uh material from the parental molecular cloud that uh, form disk around stars and that's the site where young planets form they form uh within those first a few million years of stellar evolution and then form on that circumstellar disk. So we now recognize that young stars, they possess extremely highly energetic flares very that they emit very frequently. And those flares, they hit those young planets, they just forming or just formed in these disks uh, around young stars. And so what we're finding is that uh, X-rays are very efficient, and it was known before from the theory that X-rays and UV from stars are very efficient at photoevaporating atmospheres of planets and photoevaporating gas from surrounding disks of young stars. And so those flares, they contribute to these photoevaporation effects. Like mega flares, they contribute at least 20% to the process of removing gas material from disks and removing primordial atmospheres from young planets that form in those uh, disk environments uh, and speed up, speed up it by at least 20%. So the primordial atmosphere of a young planet around young star can be completely evaporated within the first 5 million years. But uh, I have to know that this primordial atmosphere is, consists pretty much of hydrogen and he helium. Later in the evolu planetary evolution, planet will form more known to us normal atmosphere such as uh, which contains uh, nitrogen carbon oxygen and such uh, due to volcanic activity but that it's uh, at the later stages so yes that's yeah. one of the aspects for instance with, with regards to star formation you have lots of stars forming they shining they emitting those flares those flares bombarding the young planets and they just expel gas and atmospheres of planets so, um, so, so can can we uh, can we say that uh, they uh, I don't know uh, that we uh, just shape the, the those planets those super flares they they are affecting them and in kind of way that uh, uh, in, in impacting the, the atmosphere they, they just shape uh, the, uh, how the, how they uh, I don't know shape their uh, properties uh, from from gases to to more rocky planets something like that. They, they definitely, they set up initial conditions for planetary evolution. They can uh, kind of guide, uh, they definitely guide future planetary evolution. Would it be rocky or would it be uh, still gaseous? Obviously depends on this effect of uh, photoevaporation. We don't know exactly, we, we cannot accurately right now predict evolutionary paths of a planet based on just this data along with regards to photoparation rates from mega flares and such but we certainly we we know that they affect the future of the planet and its evolution okay constantine uh, uh, thank you so much for this brief interview uh, it was very interesting to hear about your research uh, once again thank you uh, and uh, it was a pleasure to host you on our show thank you so much and good luck thank with you. your research yeah bye bye, thank you. bye.